with our fun number day. Another day that we step into your mighty word, Lord. We thank you for the spirit of refreshment, Father God. That you're refreshing us. We want your spirit, Father God. We call on your spirit this morning to surround this place, Father God. Surround the airway. Surround wherever we might be, Father God. Be it in the car, in the house. No matter where we might be, Father God. We call on your spirit this morning, Father God. Just heed us, Father God, with your spirit, Father God. We glorify your name, Lord. We thank you, Father, first of all, first and, first and, for, first and foremost, for the Holy Spirit that you have given us today, Father God. For another day that you have given us to lift up your mighty name, Father God. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for another day, Father God. Breath to praise your mighty name, Lord. Feet to move into the spirit today. Just Father God, we just want to repeat what, what your spirit to be called on us today, Lord. We thank you, Father God. No matter how tired we might be, you still yet wake us and refresh us. No matter how tired we might be, you still give us the spirit to step out in faith today, Father God. No matter how tired we might be, Father God, you give us the inspiration to go on, Father God. You give us the spirit to keep moving, Father God, to keep pushing through in faith, Father God. Because of you, Father God, just want to just glorify your mighty name and giving you all the glory, honor, and praise for another day, Lord. We thank you for Progressive Community Church International, Father God. Be whether we're watching on the airways, Father God. Whether we're in person, Father God. Whether we're in our home, Father God. Whether we're in our car, Father God. We glorify your mighty name, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, Father God. We can't say we thank you enough, Father God. We thank you for limbs that move, Father God. We thank you for clarity of mind, Father God. We thank you for the breath to praise your mighty name. We come to you this morning lifting up anyone that's dealing with mental or physical challenges in their body, Father God. So we continue to call on the name of the Lord. We call on your word for healing. We call on your word for movement. We call on your word for the spirit of you, Father God. We come to you this morning lifting up anyone that's dealing with bereavement, Father God. Did you know that your angels are in heaven, Father God? Now, but we call on your word, Father God, for strength to continue to step in your word, Father God. Strength to continue to move. Be your word, Father God. Strength to continue to just be inspired every day to step out another day in your spirit, Father God. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise, Father God. You are the alpha in the making our lives. You know the beginning and the end of everything that's going to go on, Father God. You know what we're going to do before we get up this morning. You know how we're going to move. You know how we're going to step, Father God. So we call on your word to stand on this morning. That rock that sustains our lives. That rock that moves our lives. That rock that just keeps us going, Father God. It's your word, Father God. We call on you this morning, Father God. Oh, 
every morning. We're on the prayer line at 6 a.m. Lifting up prayer and praises unto our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. This month is the month of refreshing. We call it the month of refreshing. And so won't you join us on the prayer line every morning at 6 a.m. As we lift up prayer and praise. We take a scripture every day. And we use that scripture as our context. And as our guide, as we as we pray to our God. Amen. Amen. And then on Wednesdays, on Wednesdays we have Harmony Bridge. And I'm going to ask us to bring to come and share some in a minute about uh, who's up this week with Harmony Bridge. The partnerships that we've developed as we've been doing Harmony Bridge. And she's going to share some about that. But it's Wednesdays at 10 a.m. We have anywhere between about 75 and 100 meals that we that we give out every week, amen, that fresh chef prepared meals. And, and so why don't you come and, and serve with us in that way. And then at noon, we have Word on Wednesday, amen. We're, we're still in the Word on Wednesdays. We're in, uh, in Genesis, the 46th chapter. Come and join us this, this Wednesday. You will not be disappointed. I believe God has a Word just for us, just for you. And so join us on Wednesdays at noon as we dive into the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then we still need our folks to come and to serve at the farm. The farm is opening back up. Amen. We're in planting mode and cleaning mode and we need any and all that can come and, and to give of your time give you your talent as we uh, prepare for another growing season. Amen. We know that God is doing a new thing and we are excited about what God is doing in this season. So Sister is going to come. She's going to share some more with us about Harmony Bridge. Amen. 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 It's a blessing. God put this vision on the heart of Progressive Community Church and Faith CDC to be able to just serve people, to be able to just feed people. And now we form new partnerships. I mean, we were expanded. Now we have Harmony Fridge too at Brothers Keeper. So they will start Wednesday. They started out, I uh, tried a little bit last, but last month, a couple months ago, but they are now in progression with us. So they're going to have Harmony French too, where they will be serving meals at Brothers Keepers as well on Wednesday. They will be in charge of all that. We, but we're in the partnerships with the chefs, where the chefs are going to do additional meals for them to serve at their place. So we love to see this all over the city if that's the vision that God gives us. If we have it in every section of the city, where people can just come and get a fresh prepared meal for free on Wednesdays. And that's a vision that God gives us to feed people, to get back to the community, to be able to help people, to be able to put back a little bit of the economy, too, because we give a small stipend to the chefs, but it's not a lot, but it's enough. So we just want to be able to continue God's vision on Wednesday at 10 a.m. at 656 Carolina. If any of the church members want to be here at 930 to assist, we can always use volunteers. It's drive-up only, so you drive up to the curb until we can COVID situation is, is drive up only, so that's what we'll be doing at that, at that point. And this week we have DNK gourmet salad and soul food, which we'll be doing turkey, chili, and cornbread. So everybody just drive up, tell your neighbors to drive up, eat the meals. We start at 10 a.m. A lot of people are here at 9, 9, 30, that's fine, lined up, we don't mind that. We start at 10 a.m. just passing out. If you need one for your neighbor, one for yourself, one for somebody down the street, it doesn't matter. Just pull up and let us know how many you need. There's no ID show, nothing like that. So we're just going to continue to do this as long as we can, as long as we can keep it going. Brothers Keeper is in it for the duration. So we just want to continue to praise God for this opportunity to be able to give back to our community. We just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for another way to give back to our community. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Get your words out, hallelujah. Get your Bibles out. We'll be going into the Word uh, shortly, right after a, a song of meditation, a hymn of meditation from Sister uh, Lisa. She's going to come and give a hymn of meditation. And right after that, we'll be in the Word. We'll be in Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. 
verses 18, 15 through 18. Philippians chapter 1, verses 15 through 18. Oh, oh, oh. 
spirit that is in this place, oh God. We thank you, O oh Lord, my God, that you are God who looks beyond our faults. Lord, that you see all of our needs. We pray now, God, that you would empty us of us. Oh God, hallelujah. Wash us of our iniquity and cleanse us of our sin, of all of our unrighteousness, oh God. I pray that you would, hallelujah, empty me of me, fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. Hide me behind thine old rugged cross. And people see none of me, but they see all of me. And God, we pray that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart, we pray that they're acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our most precious redeemer. And the church all said together, Amen, Amen, Amen. If you have your Bibles, want you turn with me to the book of Philippians, Amen, the letter that Paul wrote to the church at Philippi, the letter that Paul wrote to the church at Philippi, Amen, Philippians, the first chapter, Philippians, the first chapter, and the 15th verse, Amen, and as we do, as our custom, we honor, as we stand, we honor the reading of the word of God, Amen, Amen, Philippians, the first chapter, the 15th through the 18th verse, we're going to go only on the 8th part of the 18th verse, Philippians chapter 1, verse 15, and it reads, I'm reading from the King James Version, some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill, the one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then, notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice. I'm going to stop right there. Hallelujah. As we uh, meditate today on a thought of how to overcome adversity. How to overcome adversity. You may take your seats this morning. Thank you, ushers, for your service. How to overcome adversity. Adversity, my sisters and brothers, is defined as something that you face in life that is antagonistic in purpose or effect. It is defined as something that is hostile towards you and actively opposing your interests or your desires. It is something or someone that is acting against you or something or someone that is working in an opposite direction from which you are going. And each of us can look back over our life and share moments and times when we went toe to toe with adversity. In fact, in fact, in fact, in fact, in fact, some ain't got to scan through the pages of your long-term memory to find an adver adverse moment in your life. You can say, Pastor, I got stuff, hallelujah, that is working against me right now. I wish I had somebody praying this morning. I already had it bad, and, and it looks like more stuff just keep on piling on. I was already dealing with some stuff. And, and, and then somebody in college says the bursar's office calls and says my financial aid ain't came through and my tuition is due. Adversity. I was already dealing with some stuff and then because of COVID I lost my job and now I'm on the verge of an eviction and Adversity. I was already dealing with some stuff, and then, hallelujah, they found a mask, hallelujah, and it appeared, hallelujah, on my loved one's chest, and they say it's cancerous adversity. I was already dealing with some stuff, and, and then I get a call that there has been an accident, and my baby, hallelujah, might not make it adversity. Already dealing with some stuff. Then I get the news. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That, that my car has seen its last days. And my credit's so bad, I can't get another one. Hallelujah. Adversity. I, hallelujah. I, I was already dealing with some stuff. 
Hallelujah. Then I get a call that I didn't get accepted to any of the union internships that I had applied for. Already dealing with some stuff. And then the breadwinner leaves and I don't know how I'm going to make it. Adversity and all of us, hallelujah, have dealt with or are dealing with in this COVID environment. We are dealing with some adversity. And if, and if you've ever dealt with or if you're dealing with adversity in your life right now, then you can understand what Paul is sharing with us and what he's dealing with in our text today. In, in the text today, Paul helps us to understand that, 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 that no matter the adversity that is in your life, that, that you can overcome adversity. Hallelujah. That's good news this morning. Hallelujah. That Paul is trying to help us to understand, Minister Dawson, that we can overcome adversity. Here is how he says that we can overcome it. We can overcome it by remembering that God has placed people in our life to help us in the midst of our adversity. That's the first thing we're going to look at. Second thing he says that we can overcome adversity by understanding the motives of those who come to help. Hallelujah. Because everybody that come to help, hallelujah, ain't coming to help you for the right reason. They coming to help to hurt you. Hallelujah. But, but we can understand that motives, Paul says, hallelujah, and we'll be the better by it. And then finally we'll see, hallelujah, that we can overcome adversity by focusing on God no matter who come in our life. Hallelujah. That we got to keep our focus on God. Here it is in verse 15. In verse 15, Paul starts by sharing with us some truths about how the gospel is being spread. He says that there were those, hallelujah, who came to Paul, who come to Paul, and they are concerned that there are people who are sharing the gospel for the wrong reason. It's there in the text. And Paul says, it, it, it's true that some are preaching Christ because they are prompted by ill will. In other words, they are, they are prompted by jealousy. My God, they, they are prompted by envy. To be prompted means that, that there is an outside force that is pushing you to do, hallelujah, what you're doing. And there is something or someone that is causing you and prompting you to do it. Hallelujah. Somebody's pushing you. Who who, who, who pushing you? Somebody's prompting you. They're leading you. They, they, they are being pushed, hallelujah, Paul says, by people or forces that wanted to see ill will. And the question that we have to ask ourselves on our Christian journey is what prompts you to serve? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's true that, that they are preaching Christ because they are prompted, Paul says, by rivalry. Hallelujah. Here it is that, that you ain't thinking about them and, and they're trying to compete with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because for some people, hallelujah, the only reason that they are, hallelujah, doing things in your life is because they think, hallelujah, that you are their rival. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We were watching uh, 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 Batman. Hallelujah. Yeah, we were watching Batman with CJ one day. And as we were watching Batman with CJ, Hallelujah, Batman had, had, had got beyond the place where he thought he had rivals. Hallelujah. But then one of his adversaries said, there, there can't be no Batman. Hallelujah. If there's no Joker. And Batman said, no, no, no. I'm above that. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm not even thinking about a rival. Hallelujah. Because you ain't on my level. And, and there are others who are out there trying to, trying to be your rival. And, and if you give them the time of day, hallelujah, then you've lost already. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell them they ain't on my level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul says that they are prompted by rivalry. Hallelujah. And, and, and the sad thing is that, is that you ain't even thinking. Hallelujah. About them. All they're trying to do is cause conflict. And there are people even in the church, I'm sad to report, whose only goal in life is to try to cause conflict in the body of Christ. 
try to cause disagreements to happen within the body of Christ. Here it is, they're trying to put folk at odds with each other. That's what Paul is saying. Trying to bring an argument or produce a struggle within the church. Paul says some are prompted by the devil to preach Jesus. Hallelujah. Because they are trying to produce ill will and conflict. He says, but in spite of those who are working against you, Paul says, you have to remember that God has placed people in your life to help you. Hallelujah. Yes, there are those that are trying to stop you, but then there are others that are trying to push you. Glory to your name, God. Well, while there may be some people that are working against you, Paul helps us to see, hallelujah, that you also have some people that are working for you. In other words, when, when you have adversity in life, Paul helps us to understand that you ain't in this thing by yourself. Hallelujah. I wish I had somebody praying with me this morning. Paul helps us. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, 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 you got some people that, that aren't working against you. Hallelujah. But they're like the, the wind to yourself. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. But 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 here it is. Here is where we, we miss the mark, Sister Lisa. Here is where we get it wrong because, because hallelujah, you can only see and focus on, hallelujah, because you've had ill will happening in your life so long and you've had people who said one thing and did something else operating in your life so long that you think everybody that comes into your life is trying to hurt you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you focus on and you can only see the ill will, hallelujah, and, 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 and you turn yourself against the wind that's trying to help you get through. Glory to your name, God. Yes, there are some people who have ill will. They are like the wind in your face. They are opposing you at every move. They are opposing you on every turn. They are antagonistic and they are pushing back against you. But I got news for you. Hallelujah. You want to hear the news? Glory to your name, God. Let me help you, hallelujah, understand, hallelujah, what happens when a force is pushed against you. Hallelujah, when you got a force that you're pushing against you, it ought to help you grow. Glory to your name, God. You ought to get stronger when, when there are forces that are working against you. Hallelujah. You ought to get better and bigger when there are people in your life trying to stop you. Hallelujah. You ought to be able, hallelujah, like you do on the treadmill. Hallelujah. And you're going up a hill. Hallelujah. The hill is designed that it might strengthen you, that it might boost you uh, and that it might make you better. Hallelujah. You ought to understand, hallelujah, then how to deal with adversity and how to deal with people who come into your life. Hallelujah. And they're like wind in your face. Hallelujah. To your name, God. And I know it gets hard. Hallelujah. Because they are antagonistic. And, and if you're not careful when you are in an adverse places, you will look at everybody that comes into your life as an adversary. Hallelujah. But, but Paul helps us to understand that there are some people that are, hallelujah, uh, uh, in your life uh, that God has placed in your life uh, to be the wind behind you. Hallelujah to your name, God. Uh, they, they are there pushing you to make it through the adversity that's in your life. Hallelujah. I used to run track. Hallelujah. Antoine, I used to run track. Hallelujah. And, and, and Hallelujah. When and ate it. 
run this fast. Oh, I wish I had a church here this morning. He didn't run this fast all by himself. There was a wind that was behind him, that was pushing him, that was making him faster than he really is. And all I'm trying to get you to see is that God has placed people in your life to push you, to make you stronger. Pushing you to make it through the Push you. Same language. And if you're like me, you, you have a hard time, hallelujah, discerning who is for me. Hallelujah. Have a hard time. And you have heard that so much. And the majority of the people, hallelujah, have said that to you. You found that all they want to do is hurt you. And so Paul, understanding this, provides us with some information on how we can know or how we can distinguish those who are here to help me from those who are here to hurt me. Hallelujah. He provides us with some information to know how to distinguish those who are here on an assignment from Satan and those who are here on an assignment from the Savior. Hallelujah. Paul provides us with details. I, I love Paul because he gives us details. He didn't let us leave it. Hallelujah. To our own imagination. Now, how to figure out who is who. But Paul gives us details about the reasons why people are preaching Christ. Details of how you can discover who is for you and who is against you. Paul says it like this. Hallelujah. In verse 10, 16, he says, The one preached Christ of, of contention, not, not, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. Hallelujah. Verse 17, But the other of love, of knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. It's right there in the text. I'm going to start in reverse. I'm going to start with the ones that are here to help you. In verse 6, 17, Paul says, Hallelujah, the latter, hallelujah, preach Christ because they're influenced by love. Right. Glory to your name, God. To, to be influenced means that something or someone... Hallelujah. You ever been drugged with love? Yes. Hallelujah. It is the love that he's talking about. It's the love of one Christian to another Christian. Hallelujah. It is the love of men and women towards Jesus. They are preaching Christ because they are under the influence of love. Hallelujah. Have you ever been under the influence? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody, hallelujah, if they're honest, they'll tell you, hallelujah, that, that they, they, they don't know how. They, they made it home one day, hallelujah, when they left the club, hallelujah, because when they left the club, Sister Lisa, they were under, hallelujah, the influence, <laughs> hallelujah. And, and it's a good thing that the police didn't show up 
Uh, they were serving all over the road because they were driving under the influence. Anybody ever brother, don't raise your hand. Hallelujah. The statute of limitations ain't gone yet. So don't raise your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's you. Hallelujah. And you are driving under the influence. They, they've been found, hallelujah, guilty of preaching under the influence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and it's alright, Paul says, to get a PUI. Hallelujah. What's a PUI? Hallelujah. I'm glad that you asked. Because the church needs more people that can be found guilty of a PUI. Hallelujah. It's alright. In other words, Paul says to have a PUI on your record. Hallelujah. He says most Christians uh, I don't want to be accused, tried, and found guilty of a PUI. I hear what you're saying, Pastor. Hallelujah. What's a PUI? I'm glad you asked. PUI is simply preaching under the influence. And Paul is saying that there ought to be some folks who are in church who don't mind being found guilty preaching under the influence. Hallelujah. Okay, okay, okay. I, heard, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I hear what you're saying. Pastor, I ain't called to preach. Okay, 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 okay. Then, then you ought to be found with a PUI still. Why? Hallelujah. Can you still be found with a PUI? Because there's somebody here that God has called to prophesy. And you ought to be prophesying under the influence. Okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you all say, I ain't no preacher. And Pastor, I don't. In God's house, uh, that's that, that's guilty uh, of praying. Nothing about prophesying, but I got a category for you. Hallelujah, because you ain't in this thing by yourself. If you can't preach uh, and you can't prophesy and you ain't learn how to pray, you ought to know how to praise uh, under the influence. Uh, and everybody in here uh, ought to have something uh, that they can praise God for. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to. Hallelujah. But you ought to be able to praise uh, under the influence. When I think about Jesus and all that is done in my life, it ought to stop you and make you get up and wave your hands and say, Thank you, Lord. You ought to be able to praise God. Hallelujah. Under the influence. Do I got any praises in here? Let me just take a poll of the room. Is there anybody in this place that can give God some praise? I don't know what is done in your life, but I know what is done in God's life. And when I think about what is done in my life, I can ever forget what is done in God's life. I can ever forget what is done in God's life. I can ever forget what is done in God's life. I can ever forget what is done in can't help but to give him praise. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to praise him. Hallelujah. Under the influence. Hallelujah. There ought to be something that God has done in your life that causes you to praise. Is there anybody here that can praise God under the influence? Because you know that if it wasn't for the Lord, you'd be worse out than you are right now. If it wasn't for the Lord, you wouldn't be saving it right now. If it wasn't for the Lord, you would have lost your mind. Hallelujah. 
The way you preach and I pray, the way you prophesy and I pray, her, you ought to be able as a Christian to have an authentic, hallelujah, praise on your life, hallelujah, and you ought to be found guilty of being under the influence, hallelujah. Paul says they are guilty of PUI because they understand that God has appointed me for the defense of the gospel. Hallelujah. That's what he says. Hallelujah. In the text, he says, Hallelujah. And they've been found guilty of a PUI. And you know how it is in the court system, don't you? Hallelujah. If you've been found guilty of anything in the court system, Hallelujah, it's best that you don't represent yourself by yourself. Look to your name, God. Hallelujah. Because, because they do some stuff in the system. That if you don't know how they operate in the system, you'll end up being guilty of something that you didn't do. Glory to your name, God. And that's why Paul said, God has appointed me, hallelujah, hallelujah, to be an advocate for those who get themselves in trouble, P-U-I, hallelujah, for doing the work of the Lord. Paul has been appointed as a public defender. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, hallelujah. Y'all don't think well of public defenders. <laughs> Glory to your name, God. All they try, they got too many cases, uh, and all they trying to do is get me a deal that don't look good for me so they can get my file off of their table. I understand that you don't care very much for the PD. Glory to your name, God, public defender. Because all they're trying to do, hallelujah, it don't seem like they have your best interest at heart. Hallelujah. Is, uh, at the same time. Now, he's able to do uh, with one person. Uh, want to chase a thousand uh, and two will put ten thousand to flight. Uh, hallelujah, tell me what God cannot do. He was, he, was, he was anointed and appointed to be a public defender, to serve uh, in the role of a defense attorney, hallelujah, and my responsibility, Paul says, uh, is to defend the gospel. Yeah. Hallelujah. hallelujah, simply means uh, the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the coming again of Jesus Christ. Can't you tell the story with me? Hallelujah. They took my Jesus. Come on, tell the story with me. Hallelujah. They hung him high and they stretched him wide. They ripped his feet and nailed his hands. They put a crown of thorns on his head. If you can tell the gospel. Hallelujah. They took a spear and they pierced him in the side. He gave up the water and the blood. He hung his head in the locks of I'm 
that every time they come into my life, it seems like the wheels start falling off my car. Every time they show up in my life, something breaks. Yeah, yeah. Paul trying to help us. He's trying to help us understand how we can understand who it is that come into our life. They got impure motive. Because every time they show up, something go wrong. Don't nothing ever go right when they around. I was doing good. Oh, y'all with me? Okay, I, okay. I was just trying to see. I was doing good. Until you showed up. Yeah. That's how you can tell Paul says, hallelujah. And he says, they come thinking to cause further damage to me. That's what Paul says. He says, they, they're trying to cause me distress in prison. That's what Paul says, hallelujah. He says, they know I got high blood pressure. And that's all Paul says. And he said that all they're trying to do, hallelujah, is add more stress so that my blood pressure rise. Because I, because I'm in prison and they ain't got the best health care in prison. And so if they can make my blood boil and go up higher, something might happen to me. That's what Paul says there in the text. They're trying to add stress, hallelujah, to an already stressful situation that you might get stressed out. Paul said that's how you can tell them. And the reason, hallelujah, people do that, hallelujah, is because they want to take you over the top. Hallelujah, the reason that people do that, because they're working to take you over the edge. But tell them like the old rapper said, don't push me because I'm, okay, y'all ain't ready this morning, hallelujah. Then tell them, don't, don't take me there. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Then I, all right, all right. Hallelujah, I'm trying the best I can. Hallelujah, God said. Paul says then in verse 18, as I heard it to a close, Paul says in verse 18, what then? And our version says, Paul says like this, says, says, but what does it matter? That's the question that Paul poses and question Paul raises in verse 18. Paul says, whether they're doing it to add insult to injury, because people will do some mean things when they think you down. Glory to your name, God. There are some folk who call themselves Christians that will kick you when you down. Glory to your name, God. The, the, the thing, hallelujah, I would like about these people, though, is that they didn't, they didn't throw a rock and hide their hand. Hallelujah, Brother Birch. Hallelujah. They didn't, they didn't throw a rock and try to hide their hand. In fact, in fact, we're in a social... Yeah. Yeah. They tagged you on the post. Hallelujah. They let it be known what they were doing and why they were doing it. They let it be known that it was to hurt me and to throw salt in my wounds. I understand how Paul feels right about here because I've been in a place where others, hallelujah, thought I was down. In fact, I'm in a place right now. Hallelujah. There are people that are working against me right now. Hallelujah. Trying to add worry to my life by subtracting contracts from my business. Hallelujah. I'm talking about right now. There's some Negroes. Hallelujah. And Negroes trying to add stress to my life uh, by taking away business uh, from me, hoping uh, that they can take me under. Hallelujah. I'm talking about right now. Hallelujah. I should call some names, but God said don't do I don't worry about them. I know they exist, but they ain't on my level. So I ain't got to worry about them. I let God take care of my light work hallelujah, and my heavy work. In fact, I let God take care of all of my work. Hallelujah. God is able. Hallelujah. Been in a place where others thought I was out. Anybody ever been in there? Been in a place where others had written me off. Hallelujah. You ever been in a place where others started throwing dirt on you uh, because you were on the ground uh, and they thought you were dead? Yeah. Glory to your name, God. You ever been in a place uh, where others uh, Oh! 
At insult tough to what look like tough an injury. So preach Christ up to add salt up to what look like I wound up. So put dirt up. Hallelujah. Because they thought up that it was a grave. But I'm here to tell them it wasn't a grave. It was a garden. I was a seed that was placed in the ground. And every time they throw dirt on me, I began to get like Anybody ever got a life up because you understand that you're a seed. And when God, hallelujah, allows them to put dirt on a seed, the seed and something on the inside of it and it breaks through. His own shell. That's what I love about God. That He waters me with the water of the Word. The water on me. And what is the water? I understand that the more dirt that I have, is the more adversity that I gotta get through. But I'm not. Not myself, nobody needs to know that you are not my daughter. God is the with you, and he'll give you the strength you need. He'll give you power, power, power to put it through, to turn it up, power to break through that person. Oh, my God. 
no matter who else has been our life. That's our word for that's the word for the day. Hallelujah. There may be somebody that's in the sanctuary or that's watching by way of social media. There may be somebody who's heard this word. You want to give your life to Christ. Well, today is that day. Hallelujah for you to come and you give your life to Christ. What does it mean that I give my life to Christ? It simply means you say, Lord, hallelujah. I know I'm a sinner coming to my life to save me. That's what it means. It means it means being honest with who you are and being honest where you are. And when you're honest, God can move you. He'll meet you where you're at, but he won't leave you there. Hallelujah. Maybe that ain't you. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Hallelujah. You, you, you know the Lord, but you haven't been praising Him and worshiping Him. And haven't been living your life like you know Him. But today you heard the word. Hallelujah. And something break your heart. And say, you ought, to, you ought to rededicate your life to God unless you want to come. Or maybe you, 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 you don't have a place that you call home. And you want to come today. Hallelujah, make Progressive Community Church your home. You don't have a, a, a pastor. And God said today, he, he touched your spirit and said, this is your church and, and that is your pastor. Hallelujah, if that's you, want to come today. Hallelujah. Amen. And our sister is come. Amen. I said, God, and God was praying. Hallelujah. There may be somebody watching my way on social media. Hallelujah. And so we're going to say the prayer, hallelujah, and confession that God has called us to. He said we confess with our, hallelujah, confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and the cleanse of all of our unrighteousness. So, so Father, we come today, those that are, hallelujah, wanting to receive the Lord in your life for the first time, just repeat after me. Dear Lord, I know that I am a sinner. Please come into my life. And save me. Lord, the best I know how, I'm giving myself to thee. I, I, I recognize you as my Lord and as my precious Redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you said that prayer, you said it in your heart, hallelujah, you made a confession, you believe it in your heart. The Bible says that you are saved and church let's celebrate. Hallelujah, those who are saved, let's give God the praise for the right now. But we're going to pray a prayer of thanksgiving. Father, we thank you for these souls that have given their life to you all today. We pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you would strengthen them and hold them in this season, God, that you would help them and move them forward in life with you, O oh God. Move them forward in a new way. Today is their new birthday, March the 7th, 2021. Hallelujah. And we thank you for them, O oh God. We thank you for new life. For your word says that you come, that we may have life and have it to the full. We thank you for life on the earth and life eternally with you in heaven. Bless them now, O oh God, and keep them in our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Our sisters come forward. Amen. 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 She comes this morning on a Christian experience. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For this is your vessel and your servant, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you that she's heard your voice, oh God. Hallelujah, has decided to move, O oh God, at your command, Father. And she has followed her own voice, of her own plan or desires, God. But Lord, she's listening to you and, and she's coming to join this, this, this body of believers that we call Progressive Community Church. She's coming to join this local congregation, O oh God, to help us spread forth the gospel, the good news about Jesus. Bless her life now, God. Keep her and cover her is our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 I give God the praise. Amen. Give God the praise. Amen. Amen. 
spiritual seeds and physical seeds my my spiritual seed is the seed of faith and love hallelujah the seed of faith and love sister Karen come in for a second hallelujah I want you to be blessed on what you sow this is yours amen amen hallelujah thank you Jesus glory to your name God and repeat after me just sow it sow it Amen. Repeat after me. This is my seed. I did not deserve it, but God so graciously provided it unto me. Therefore, I will sow my seed. I will sow my seed. I will sow my seed in obedience to God's word and in expectation of the harvest. 100% obedience to God. 100% Obedience to tithing, 100%. Hey, amen. They're going to come around. God, they're doing that. There may be somebody in the sanctuary or watching by way of social media. And then you, you want to be able to give in a new way. You can give by going to the cash app. Our cash app is the dollar sign PCC Gary. That's the dollar sign PCC Gary. Or you can go out to give LaFi. We have on our Give Lify platform, and you can give through Give Lify. Just look for Progressive Community Church of Gary. You can go to Tithely. You can go to Tithely. Just look for Progressive Community Church of Gary. And there you can sow your seed. We have a number of ways that you can go and sow your seed. So why don't you do that today? I just believe. I just know. I just have faith. I understand. Hallelujah, what happens when we sow. Amen. That, that I understand what God does. Hallelujah. When you are obedient to his word. And when you sow your seeds. In fact, the old song said, you can't beat God's giving. No matter how you try. The more you give, the more he'll give to you. Just keep on giving. Because it's real and true. You can't beat God's giving. No matter how you try. Some of you get more, hallelujah, to, to a waitress or a waiter when you go out to eat than you give to God. Amen. And say, man, stay out. Hallelujah. You'll give them 20%, but you won't give God 10. My God. Hallelujah. If anyone has an opportunity to sow their seed, that's all we're doing. We're sowing seeds and putting seeds in the ground. Somebody say, I got a seed in the ground. Hallelujah. Somebody shout it again. I got a seed in the ground. Somebody, one more time. I got a seed in the ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is going to do something. Hallelujah. With your seeds in this season. Thank you, Father. Some seeds that, that go in the ground, oh God, it don't take very long to come up, God. So, hallelujah. Some are going to see an expectation, oh God. It's going to happen, hallelujah, really quickly, oh God. But then there are some other seeds, oh God. Like watermelons, they take even longer to grow, oh God. So God, you're helping us to understand that we're going to be blessed, oh God, in the short term and the long term. And we thank you for it, oh God, for our obedience to your word. Now God, so back into the lives of your children for their obedience, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold, God. But you're an unlimited God. You got all things in your hand. And so we won't place any limits on you. We say, however, you want to bless your people to have your way. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Today is the first Sunday of March. First Sunday of the third month of the year. Each of you should have uh, your, your, your uh, sacraments, the blood and, and the body. We call it the bread and the wine. You should have it. Those at home, uh, just get some, get some juice, get some crackers, whatever, whatever you can find. Some bread, 
Hallelujah. Get some juice and partake of the Lord's Supper with us. The Word says that we ought to do this in remembrance of Jesus. Every time that we do it, that we ought to do it in remembrance of Jesus. As every way have. Hallelujah. says in 1st Corinthians 11 chapter for I have received of the Lord that which I saw also delivered unto you the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take ye this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as often as ye drink, as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. As often as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. Let's pray. Most gracious God, we thank you, Hallelujah, that you you've given us, O oh God, uh, this uh, the Lord's supper, O oh God, baptism and the Lord's supper is two of your ordinances, O oh God. And so, Lord, today we come and. We, we, we take of the bread and, and we drink of the cup in remembrance, O oh God, of, of the sacrifice that you, that you made for us, how you gave your life just for us. So help us today, O oh God, to understand the, the, the significance of, of that event, O oh God, that we might live our lives, O oh God, differently than with the way we've been living, that we may live Hallelujah, as sacrifice to please you, O oh God, your name might be magnified, glorified, and praised. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray now, God, if we have an all against somebody, we pray that you would forgive us, O oh God, as we bring it and confess it unto you. O oh Lord, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. For I receive of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you. The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took the cup and when uh, took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as all that ye drink it in remembrance of me. Take up the cup. Amen. 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 I know it was the blood for me. I know it was the blood. No, it was the blood. And I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, <laughs> 
Amen. For all of those that have been watching.